The plaintiff identified as D.O. has withdrawn a lawsuit against ex-Elmo voice actor Kevin Clash allegedly um, for the child sex abuse. So the, the notice of voluntary dismissal without prejudice was filed in U.S. District Court in New York on April 15th. Of course, the Cl Clash still faces lawsuits from four of the men. So this was the fifth guy that he was the most recent one and all claiming that Clash abused them as teenagers. The last accuser came forward just two weeks ago and they're all represented by the same lawyer, Jeff Herman. He's the Miami lawyer that's handling all the cases against Clash. He stated earlier this month that each of these victims alleges that Kevin Clash was a father figure who groomed them with attention before enga engaging them in sexual contact. So this is, of course, deeply disappointing, right? I saw a documentary about Kevin Clash, and it's such a heartwarming mm -hmm. story. He loved Muppets when I he was young. I saw the same documentary. Yeah. yeah, and you know, idolized Jim Henson, etc. Gets to meet with, meet him. Gets to work with him. It's like a dream come true, and you know, and you just love the guy, and he has this great, and he takes Elmo as like a throwaway character, and he and he made him what he is. He gives him life, and the kids start loving Elmo more than the other mm -hmm. characters. It's a great story. And for it to end like this is disastrous. Yeah, look, I maybe as a former lawyer, you can explain this part to me. Is the burden of proof so low in a civil case that shouldn't there be uh, non-civil, what's the other thing? Uh, criminal. <laughs> criminal, thank you. <laughs> I, it seemed there's, I had another word there for it. But shouldn't the, I don't understand how he's getting away with that part, that they're, how is this up to the civil part? You know what I mean? How is it that they're dropping this by choice of, of the, the people who well, are okay. alleged uh, molested or whatever. So, so here's the situation, right? First of all, as far as burden of proof is c considered, this is a very colloquial way of referring to it. Like in a criminal case, it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt. So they usually say in law school, like 98, 99% certain that he did it. Mm -hmm. So you can declare him not guilty, even though you might not think he's innocent, right? Because right? mm -hmm. it hasn't met that burden. In a civil case, it's just 51%. If you think it's more likely that he did it than he didn't do it, mm -hmm. then you rule against them. So it's not a very high burden, right? right? But it could be that they're dropping the case not because they don't think they're going to win, but because they got paid. That's what. That's or, the fascinating part about this to me is what would cause a, a plaintiff to drop their case? Is it pressure? Is it that they're being paid to be silent? Is it because the allegations are false? That to me is the most fascinating part about it. And we have another example of this just in the last year. You know, Bishop Eddie Long down in Atlanta. It's the exact same thing. Father figure, bunch of of uh, teenage boys. I mean, it. These. I, I just that that difference between the burden of proof, the 51 percent, and that 98 percent, and how money somehow gets in between those two numbers uh, is no just question. right. See, what is their motive money, when they're asking for so much money? Yeah. Yeah, and money perverts the whole thing. So there's no way we could know. And, exactly. And, and it's because now he has so much money. So maybe he bought them off, and they dropped the case mm -hmm. in, in this one particular mm -hmm. case. Or maybe he has so much money, so they are motivated. You know, I don't by driven by one lawyer. Maybe mm -hmm. we have no idea, right? Yep. To be fair, to go try to get his money. As soon as there's one accuser, a second accuser is much right. more likely, and then a third, there's a, a pile on. Yes. Or he did it to a lot of kids, right. and that's why there's a legitimate pile on. Right. right, and I understand that legal things can't be decided on what our gut feeling is, but realistically, if he did this to one, the idea that then there's all these other mm -hmm. accusers the same age that live around, you know, that are all just piling on for the money and that are willing to put their reputation and their family name and all that, mm -hmm. just that just doesn't add up to me. And I know that's not how things know, are decided in the court of law, but no, just no, in the, the court, court of logic. Of yeah, I think. right. And the court of law will, of course, decide it. And if it turns out it's another direction, mm -hmm. then okay, it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, my gut says it seems unlikely that a lot of kids mm -hmm. would make up the same story, be all around the same agent, and they're not like they're not prepubescent for whatever mm -hmm. that's worth. Not much, right? They're more in the 16, mm -hmm. 16. Right. I believe they're all around 16. Yeah, yeah. and so um, so you know. It, it, Either way, it's really disappointing. If he's innocent, God, they destroyed this great guy, et cetera. Right. Uh, and if, if he's he guilty, did it, oh, well, right. you used Elmo to sleep with 16 year olds. Why did you do that? Yeah. And to me, I always think, like, dude, just go get 19 year olds, mm -hmm. right? Then no, every, everything's kosher, mm -hmm. 16, 19. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? Right. Go, you go to college. I mean, you would have gotten plenty of action. Yeah. Like, you can use Elmo there. 
Yeah, yeah. And, I, and not to say like, hey, go be a pervy guy, go get 19 year olds, right. but don't go but, after 16 year olds. Right. Straight, gay, it doesn't matter. And it started much earlier than that because he would start by, you know, being a, a parental figure to them before it, it evolved into any. See, sort of that abuse of trust allegedly. is the worst part, yes. right? You're absolutely you right about them. that, Sam. Yeah. yeah, and of course, also what makes this just feel grosser is that this is a child. Even if, even they, though the boys were 16, this right. Elmo is a child's plaything. Right. So yes. had this been. Yes. Yeah, you know, we're going to talk about the Transformer shortly. Had this been a Transformer that's a little more identified with something a little older, it might have had a little bit. It's still awful, of course, but you know what I mean. Like, there's something about the, the using, age here that is so profoundly. You're 100 percent right. If you're using Elmo to seduce uh, people, right? You've you've gone in the wrong direction, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, and you know how mature could the kids be if they're like, oh, cool, the mm -hmm. Elmo guy? Right. Yeah. yeah.